the media's coverage oh, it was of awful. Malcolm versus it was awful. the real deal. It was awful. Mm -hmm. And so I learned about Malcolm and I realized that I had been had. I realized that you I had You had bought missed. what the media had told you. Yes, I bought it, hook, line, and sinker. But when I heard Malcolm's entire presentation, everything fell in line and it was logical. And it made me understand that there's no sin in being angry. In fact, if you're not angry, there's something wrong with you. And why do you think Malcolm was killed? The I think there's real a, issues. I think that there are a number of uh, reasons why he was killed. And it's a very, very painful reality that we need to deal with. He was a threat to America's global ambitions. Uh, he had done a lot in Africa to awaken the African countries and let them understand that you, they should not be victim of the courtship that American businesses were engaged in, the Peace Corps and all these things, because they don't love you. They want your minerals. If they did, look what they're doing to us, and we're your brothers and sisters. Look what they're doing to us in, you know, Mississippi and whatnot. And so many of them began to quote uh, Malcolm on the floor of the United Nations, ironically. So I think that that's one dimension that the State Department, and they tried to kill him uh, when he was in Egypt. They tried to poison They poisoned him, but he had his stomach pumped and he survived. So that was one dimension. Then there were the authorities here in this country that uh, also wanted him to, to, to leave this life. And then there was a lot of factionalism within the Nation of Islam. And there was a lot of greed, there was a lot of ambitiousness, and there was a lot of uh, friction because the Nation of Islam had grown into an economic colossus. And self-sufficiency. They were self-sufficient. The same things that your parents practiced. Exactly. And they were a threat. They had their own schools. They had their own religion. Food. They had their own name their own diet. They were self-sufficient. And that was a threat. Big time. And so um, I think that there are some people who were in the nation who... See, many of the people who had been fished by Malcolm into joining the nation had been on the street like he had. And a lot of them, as the money started to come in, some of the old temptations began to take over. I interviewed a man uh, Talmadge Hayer, in prison, and he told me that he thought that Malcolm was a hypocrite and that he was wrong in bad-mouthing Elijah. He told me this on camera. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me how they went about assassinating him and, you know, how determined they were to take him out. He really believed it, you think? Oh, he, yeah, he really did. He thought, and the more Malcolm protested, uh, the angrier they became. And so he took me right through. He was one of the gunmen. He had a pistol. And he described how there were three gunmen. One had a rifle and two had pistols. Mm -hmm. He was one of the gunmen. The rifle went off first and struck down Malcolm. And then the two men with revolvers went up to the stage and emptied their revolvers. Mm -hmm. And he told me that he was convinced that he had done the right thing, you know. And I asked him, I said, um, in your life, have you ever so much as spat at a member of the White Citizens Council or the Ku Klux Klan? Or did you ever smack one? And he dropped his head and he said, no. Did mm -hmm. he understand the meaning of that question, do you think? I made it clear. Mm -hmm. But he said that... Um, it wasn't until years later, while in prison, that he came to understand that Malcolm was not lying, he was not wrong, and that there was corruption. And he had a nervous breakdown in prison because he realized that he, who he had taken yes, off. Yes, exactly. You know? So, oh. I mean, this was just a very, very painful experience, and it's something that we are not yet wrestling with. Uh, 
I don't want to get overly philosophical, but I just wanted to respond to your question that Malcolm had a tremendous impact on me after he was uh, dead. Afterwards. Yes, because after that I became hungry to get this story and learn more about this extraordinary man. Alex Haley just came out with the book soon after the assassination. Got to know Alex, became very good friends. And I began, I got to know Betty and the whole family, all of this. And so I began to fill out this cavity. I had this rich nourishment from Martin, but the cavity that uh, my ignorance had created with uh, Malcolm was beginning to be filled in. And then even more significant, I think, uh, were the role that the students played. Yes because I think that that's something that today's students don't really understand. 